hello, um, um, my name is Mazia Romansade. I'm the uh, head of the Gelenkzentrum Berlin, the Joint Center Berlin. And um, so we are here seated in uh, former West Berlin at Kurfürstendamm 170. Uh, my operative spectrum is uh, the hip and knee replacement surgery and the four foot def deformity surgery, uh, meaning hallux valgus and hallux rigidus uh, corrections. Uh, the hallux valgus is uh, the so-called bunion, uh, is a deformity that is visible from outside that you can really see right away when you, see, when you have a look at the foot. And uh, so this is a deformity uh, that is caused by the pain uh, because of a um, hyperpressure situation of the first metatarsal head. And so uh, the first toe, the big toe, is then shifted uh, to the direction of the second toe so that the first metatarsal head gets naked more and more and more painful as the pressure is um, uh, increasing. The hallux rigidus is uh, normally not that much visible from outside as there is no deformity that is very evident. Uh, but the hallux rigidus is a uh, diminishing of the cartilage of the first metatarsophalangeal joint so that the pressure is provoking inflammations and pain and uh, bony, um, 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 bony structures that are getting thicker and thicker around the joint that are preventing the toe from bending and extending. Actually, I think both genetically and by the shoe wear, um, women are mo more affected by the hallux valgus. Um, as, of course, uh, female shoe wear uh, is causing more pain on the bunion when there is a, as the bunion is genetically um, caused, uh, women are suffering more from the pain that they uh, would have um, by the shoe wear. And men actually suffer more from the hallux rigidus, as the hallux rigidus is, uh, to my opinion, also not only genetically, but also caused by uh, um, a re uh, repetitive um, micro trauma of the first metatarsophalangeal joint, playing soccer uh, or doing other sportive activities, where men are really more maybe affected of, uh, during the last decades. The, the plate that I invented 17, 17 years ago is uh, in this way special that I adapted with the, uh, from time to time with, uh, within the generations of the changing of the model, of the development of the model. I adapted it to the, to, to the needs of the surgery, to the needs of the patients to get mobilized right away. So the stability of the plate is maybe the, the, the best that you can find on the market. But my plate is not on the market, it's only produced by the factory uh, for, for myself. And uh, so uh, this is, in a way, the secret that I keep uh, um, both the osteotomy, the cutting of the bone, and the plate um, are used ex exclusively by myself. And um, the mobility that the patient has by the plate um, is done by the stability that the uh, plate allows you to have. And so uh, people can be um, operated both uh, unilaterally or bilaterally, and they can be mobilized right away after the operation. And this is the reason is, both the plate and the osteotomy, the kind, the shape of cutting the bone uh, is giving uh, this um, comfort to the patient. Um, the plate can be left inside uh, as it is uh, produced uh, of titanium, but at the other hand, the plate uh, uh, is usually being removed as the soft tissue over the plate, over the first metatarsal uh, shaft, is not that thick usually at the patients, especially in skinny women, so that uh, I tend to uh, remove the plate after one year. Uh, the patients are able to walk right after the operation. Uh, they get discharged from hospital after three days uh, when the wound is dry. So the wound drying is the main thing that I'm looking for when I hospitalize the patient. But the patients are able to do any normal activity after they get dis discharged from hospital, but jumping, springing and equivalent uh, sportive activities. So this is something I would like them to avoid for the first three months until the bone is completely healed that I see from the x-ray that the patient sent to me or bring to me and then I give the uh, freedom of ho the whole sportive activity after three months. But until that time the patient is able to participate in the, dailies, uh, in the daily life. He can drive the car after one week as long as the wound is dry. Um, there are three main reasons for uh, the recurrence of the hallux valgus. 
The first is if the surgery is not per, um, uh, performed in the right manner, that's something that you can see right after the operation in the x-ray, that you have your, your doubts that the, the, the straightening of the first ray is really achieved. Uh, the second is when the, the, the patient did not obey um, the recommendation not to jump in the first three months of the bone healing period. And the third reason might be that the implant that you use is not stable enough. So the plate system that I use is of course very stable, but there are alternative methods that use maybe only one screw or two screws or um, maybe just a wire. And this might be um, too insufficient to stabilize the correction, even if it's good after the operation for the period of the first three months of the bone healing uh, time. Uh, I'm a supporter of the resurfacing um, of the hip um, because my experience during the last 15 years and the experience of the specialists that I'm in contact with, uh, we are a, a quite a small group in the world uh, that is uh, exchanging its experiences concerning the resurfacing of the hip, uh, we have very good results. The bad results uh, that have uh, brought uh, a kind of negative um, propaganda against the uh, resurfacing system uh, is caused by uh, failed implants by com companies that try to imitate the good implant that we still use today, the McMinn, Derek McMinn original um, implant, and they failed because they, sh they changed the shape um, of the model. And this caused uh, um, a higher load of uh, um, metal ions, and uh, this caused maybe the failure of these, of, of these systems. But this is something that the, 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 maintain, the, the implants that still are on the market, the three implants that are still on the market, not, uh, do not have to the extent of a signi significance. The resurfacing can be applied for any kind of patient, of course. But usually um, I would uh, prefer a, a geometry um, between the, the socket, the acetabulum and uh, the femur that is favoring uh, an operation where I don't have to sacrifice too much of the pelvic bone. So if the neck is not too thick compared to the head or compared to the socket, it is always possible uh, to use a resurfacing. And I also um, applied or expanded the indication for this implant also for the elderly, also for people uh, who are female or also for people who are smaller. This is a recommendation um, that uh, really, uh, or the expansion of this in, in the indication is maybe going up, uh, over the extent of the recommendation, but in my hands, in my imp experience, um, I only had good experiences with this, and so this is, if a patient asked me to have this, I really would not deny to do it for him, even if he is in the elderly, even if he is female or smaller. The healing process, the bio biological healing process, takes about three to four months, of course, until the swelling is, has decreased and disappeared. But the patient is right away after the operation able to be mobilized the next day after the operation. So after he has, his, he has, it operation, he has had his operation and narcosis, he is really able to put full weight bearing uh, on his artificial joint. And so within the first days, the patients get uh, impatient and they want to be dis discharged after uh, resurfacing of the hip within the first uh, five or three, six days after the operation. Actually, there is no limit for the sportive activity. Of course, I don't, uh, um, I don't um, recommend uh, acceleration sportive act activities, but this is also possible. And if the patient feels secure and safe, he also will not be um, prevented uh, by the recommendation of the sur surgeon uh, to do these activities. But uh, I, well, I would say he can, do any, uh, he, he can perform any sportive activity, but I don't, I don't uh, recommend acceleration sportive activities. Uh, the uh, knee joint replacement is recommended uh, always when, of course, like the hip replacement, when the patient suffers from an arthritic situation where he doesn't, uh, he's not able to get rid of the pain by conservative um, uh, treatment. And so whenever the patient feels a discomfort, whenever his social life uh, is bothered and to the extent uh, that he is always confronted, confrontated to the pain, uh, he is really mature for being uh, operated and having a, hip, uh, a knee replacement or hip replacement.
The operation time is about one and a half hour and the hospitalization stay, the stay in the hospital is about uh, five to seven days after the operation maximum. Um, I would recommend, especially for the um, uh, hip and knee replacement of physiotherapy, uh, that can be performed as an outpatient procedure, so you don't have to be hospitalized uh, in a rehab clinic, you, ha you can do it at, from at home. And uh, it's good to have a gait training where your gait is really uh, um, uh, is aiming for a, sym uh, a symmetric gait, gait again after the operation. And uh, it is, of course, recommendable to strengthen uh, your, your thigh muscles after the operation because um, obviously um, the thigh muscle uh, decreases in its um, diameter uh, before the operation as the patient, because of pain, uh, is not putting the full load on his uh, affected leg. The longevity um, of the um, artificial hip or knee replacement is quite similar. So when you get a hip or knee replacement today, you can, uh, for the future, calculate that you will have it still inside after uh, 15 years in 90% in of the cases. That means the, long, the longevity of the uh, hip or knee replacement that is implanted today is about 90% after 15 years. So 10% have been changed or there has been a revision surgery for uh, by any means or any reasons. Maybe uh, the, the main reason is the aseptic uh, loosening of the joint. So that the procedure has to be redone. We have to have a revision, but this is in only maximum. Uh, this is the data that we have today in 10% of the cases uh, the, the case, actually. Yeah, I'm not a supporter of the minimal invasive surgeries. Uh, well, at the knee replacement, there was a VAG where it was proposed, but it has been left because they didn't see any advantage in really reducing uh, the cuts, but they saw disadvantages because it was more difficult to, to have an overview of the knee joint and impl implanting the implant. Uh, and for the hip replacement, it is still, um, um, they're still talking about the minimal, so-called minimal invasive uh, hip replacement surgery. But I have to say that it's uh, maybe sometimes you have to sacrifice um, for, the, for the smaller approach, um, the, you have to sacrifice the soft tissue injury on it. So if you put the hooks uh, on the joint or around the joint and you really have to cause a lot of pressure just in order to reduce uh, the approach that you have, to reduce the length of the cut that you have, uh, in order to uh, really um, make a smaller cut to satisfy the patient's uh, idea of having a uh, minimal, so-called minimal invasive surgery, you might cause a soft tissue trauma and you might also sacrifice the possibility of having a perfect overview by implanting especially the socket. At the other hand, also now, we are talking about short stems in the, sh uh, in the hip surgery. And the so short stems are ha having no bigger reason other than that uh, it's not that you are um, uh, sacrificing less bone, although it's propagated by um, the surgeons that are using it or by the companies that are uh, um, um, producing these prostheses. The short stems are having its, uh, their reasons, especially now nowadays, because of the so-called minimal invasive approach, because uh, it's more difficult to um, implant the normal stems now with this approach because it's di more difficult to get around the corner when you prepare the shaft uh, in the thigh, in the, in the femur. So the reason now that is that the industry is producing more short stems is not because the short stem has any biomechanical advantage. The short stem is more easy to implant when you make a short cut. In case there should be any open question, you can always pass by at Kudam 170 at uh, Gelenkzentrum Berlin in former West Berlin. And uh, so I will be there on Fridays especially for my outpatient clinic where I can answer your questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.